Thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video and keeping me fed. The link in the description will bring you to a massive library of the internet's best documentaries. You'll also get access to my streaming platform, Nebula, but more on that later. Let's watch this video first. This is it. The Strokes delivered, and The New Abnormal is the band's true return to form. With their decade-defining debut, The Strokes introduced a template for a new era of guitar-based music. They became the band that changed everything. The last great rock stars, the saviors of rock and roll. You know the story. Is This It would be a tough act for anyone to follow, much less the band who crafted it. And despite never releasing a bad album since, each new record was constantly compared to that initial release and held to a level of expectation that just couldn't possibly be met. Regardless of how you felt about everything after Is This It, the strokes are back and better than ever, and in more ways than one. With some time spent apart pursuing side projects and the added aid of a legendary producer, the new abnormal has the band rekindling the kind of magic they'd progressively lose after their debut. Let's dive into the new abnormal, or how the strokes learn to stop worrying and love the band. For a long time, the strokes had been drifting apart. Following their debut, the group felt that they needed to put out a new record immediately or their careers would be over, and that might have been their biggest mistake. From then on, making music would fill them with fear and a feeling of creating out of obligation rather than from artistic expression. The cracks became ever present on their third record, First Impressions of Earth. When their follow-up records failed to perform as well as their debut, they felt that they hadn't truly made it. Egos began to clash and members of the band began dealing with drug and alcohol addictions, only adding more tension. On their first three albums, Julian Casablancas acted as creative director, writing all of the band's lyrics and music. So when the band suggested a more collaborative approach after a five-year hiatus, Julian complied, but it appeared he did so with some added spite. On Angles, Julian recorded the majority of his parts alone, leaving the rest of the band to meddle in the studio without him. As a result, the album sounded like a record made by a band who didn't want to record it at all, because they didn't. The band's members refused to be in the same room as one another. By the time the group were recording Come Down Machine, many believed they were just satisfying their five-album contract with RCA. I mean, one look at the cover, and it intentionally looks like a product of the label. They even decided to pull a media blackout following its release, meaning no promotion, interviews, or tours, mainly due to the blatant lack of harmony between members. It was clear something needed to change, as each member of the Strokes began venturing into side projects of their own. Julian Casablancas formed the experimental rock band The Voids. <laughs> Fabrizio Moretti began crafting remixes and visual art. Albert Hammond Jr. focused his attention on solo efforts. Guitarist Nick Valenci took the lead in the sludgier rock band CRX. And Nikolai Freitcher joined the supergroup Summer Moon. Rumors of a Strokes follow-up had been brewing since 2015, but when the band did reconvene, all we got was the four-song EP, Future Present Past. As time went on, and with the members of the Strokes fragmented by side projects, a new album from the band seemed more and more unlikely. But soon word began circulating that the band was in touch with producer Rick Rubin founder of Def Jam Records and legendary producer for artists like ACDC, U2, Beastie Boys, Lana Del Rey, Kanye West, Eminem, The Red Hot Chili Peppers, Linkin Park, and countless others. He's typically known for helping A-list artists reboot their validity, exactly what the Strokes needed at this point in time. Rick Rubin understood the need to get the boys back in form and creating together as a unit. It helped that he stepped in as an overseer at the helm rather than a band member down in the trenches. The band recalls that recording the new Abnormal weirdly felt the most like recording their first album, feeling open to sharing ideas and with a better overall energy in the studio. Ruben's production style is known for its tendency to strip down songs and amplify what remains. And that style is all over the album, with snappy drums, bright vocals, and crisp guitars. Rubin would aid the Strokes in adjusting their indie rock style for a much more modern setting, converging new wave and synth pop into their worn out indie rock aesthetic. The perfect example being Bad Decisions. Oh, 
reminiscent of earlier signature strokes, it's immediately catchy but features a new wave twist, and quite literally as it reinterprets some early 80s classics. <laughs> the original approach that made the strokes feel so fresh and nostalgic all at once. They convert the old into something new. The new abnormal is filled with that sort of familiar energy, making it easily identifiable as the strokes while showing that they can still surprise. The album continues to show off Albert and Nick's knack for dueling guitars and really cool panning techniques. at times juxtaposed, and at others in perfect harmony, but always creative and interesting. It seems like for so long, Julian was trying to be anyone but Julian from The Strokes. But after a fairly shaky output throughout the last decade, the frontman returns on this release in his most invigorated state. His songwriting and vocal performances have improved enormously over the years, and the new Abnormal is a highlight for both. Life is such a funny journey. The dreamy Eternal Summer is one of the greatest displays of his vocal range, featuring his usual gruff, but also the highest falsetto we've ever heard from him. Previous lyrical cliches are cut, making way for some surprisingly vulnerable and contemplative emotions. Other lyrics make more sense in the context of a breakup, or a divorce, like the one Julian was going through in 2019. When Julian wanted to make more experimental and synthy sounds, he finally did so with his band The Voids. 2018's Virtue is vibrantly weird and beautifully messy. The bit of harshness that's been lacking in The Strokes' latest offerings is back thanks to that experience. Brooklyn Bridge to Chorus brings some of that manic glam rock and disco evocative of the voids. And while the album features their lightest track list, it's in no way their shortest release. The majority of tunes favor runtimes of over five minutes, allowing instrumentals to truly shine on their own and even venturing towards kraut rock levels of repetition. On the new Abnormal, the strokes sound more united than ever before. Between tracks, we get random snippets of the band interacting. <laughs> and while this is normal for many artists, and even the Strokes did a bit of it on Come Down Machine, it feels essential here. And and here we go, friends. Hold on, I can't. Maybe that's a kooky situation. To hear them joking and laughing together throughout the record is a relief. Like they're finally having fun again, loosening up and learning to love what made them so great in the first place. Those bits of studio horseplay linking tracks plays directly into that sense of fun and freedom felt in the music. Its cover, also bright and busy, is the perfect visual reflection of these sounds. The process of making the new abnormal was admittedly the least stressful since their debut, with ego struggles finally put to rest and an overall maturity between members. It's impressive to see the Strokes make something this consistent and cohesive 20 years since their inception. The new abnormal is the perfect culmination of the band's strengths while simultaneously reflecting the influence the members brought in from their other projects. It's nothing new when you really think about it, just a simply more mature and refined version of the strokes, where the lines between indie rock and new wave pop have been blurred. It revitalized and secured the band's career, earning them their first Grammy win, but overall representing a recovery for the interpersonal relationships within the band. The boys seem happier and healthier while putting together their best collection of songs in more than a decade. It feels like the strokes have finally shaken off the ghost of that first album. So if you're still holding out for another Is This It? I'm sorry to say, this is just the new abnormal.
Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like rating, subscribe, and share it with a music nerd. I've got some new reward tiers up on Patreon now, so you'll be able to vote on monthly playlist themes, get your name in the credits, and be automatically entered to win monthly merch and vinyl giveaways. The link to support us is below, so please, if you enjoy the content, consider throwing us some coffee money. While you're down there, don't be afraid to listen to our Spotify podcast, Playmate, where up-and-coming artists play interviewee and DJ. They choose eight tracks, and we dive into them for about an hour. The first full season is out now, with the second on the way. Also, thank you to CuriosityStream for keeping the lights on. What is it? What's on there? Is it any good? Hear me out. So this guy here founded the Discovery Channel, home of Deadliest Catch, Mythbusters, Planet Earth, all that good stuff. And he went and made a streaming platform called Curiosity Stream to bring more cool stuff like that online, like David Attenborough's Light on Earth. Aside from listening to this old man's sultry voice, you get to marvel at the beauty of bioluminescence. Content on dinosaurs, space, the future, food, oh, food. war, dogs, mushrooms, and what's the internet without cats? Really big cats. Okay, but how much? Well, when you use my link below, you get Curiosity Stream for 26% off. A weird percentage, I know. But it makes it under $15 for the whole year. Plus, you'll also get Nebula for free. Nebula is a streaming platform featuring even more content from creators you might know. Polyphonic, MKBHD, Lessons from a Screenplay, Tom Scott, and a bunch of others. There's no ads there, and it's subscription-based, so it helps creators earn a lot more than they would on YouTube. So use my link below to try out the pair of streaming platforms for one reduced price. It really helps support this channel and allows me to keep doing this as a full-time gig. So thank you for your continued support. Thanks for watching and keep listening to The Strokes.